Well, you know, neuroscience wasn't in the curriculum when I started. I mean, you, you could do psychology or you could do physiology or you could do anatomy or chemistry. But I mean, I mean, what could be more exciting than trying to understand how the brain works? But, but I don't think I knew it for a long time. I mean, I was always interested in how things worked or you know, how people thought. And it came out of psychology, really. Uh, and I always say, you know, the older you get, the further back you can see the roots of things. And I tell the story of uh, my first experiment at the age of six when the teacher handed out crayons. And so there was this whole moment of, moment of boredom when she was handing out crayons to each person, so each of us sitting there with nothing to do. And I'd heard someone had told me that if you mix all the colors together, you get black. So I did that. That was my first experiment. <laughs> so, and then when I was in school, everybody was required to give a uh, public speech to the, to the student body, which was a frightening prospect. I thought about transferring that year to a different school. I ended up giving the talk on hypnosis, which you know isn't that far away from where I ended up, I guess. But in the end, I gravitated towards uh, you know uh, mental life and cognition, and then within that, memory was very appealing because it was concrete. You know, it was something you could measure, and most importantly, it was something you could study in animals. And as I got interested in that, then I. It, you be, you, I really began drifting towards biology because in the end you, you want to understand mechanism. You want to understand, if you really want to understand how something works, then you want to know actually how it actually does work, not metaphorically, not abstractly. So, and then you know, neuroscience became part of the curriculum in the late 60s. And by that time I was starting a postdoc and was beginning to call myself a neuroscientist. 